Good morning. This is Bill from Curious Cars and Auto House of Naples on another... Well, you know what? I actually can't complain too much. The weather could be much, much worse. It's not terrible right now. Um, it's not good, it's not great, but it's not terrible. I had looked at the weather report for this week and it seemed like the humidity was going to be cut down. It's still going to be hot as balls. I mean, there's no question about that. It's still late September in Naples, so you can't get too uh, enthusiastic. But it is just a tinge, a little taste, a residue of maybe better weather that's on the way. So I've got that to celebrate. My glasses aren't yet fogged up, and uh, so far I'm feeling eh, pretty damn chipper. So uh, bird activity at a minimum. Um, there is some yelling up in the trees, some chirping, some screaming. Uh, it seems to have died down now that I've started, so that's a, either a good thing and that they're just taking it easy, uh, or a bad thing and that they're grouping somewhere waiting to swoop down and peck my eyes out. But uh, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Deers, nothing. Don't know if they're seasonal here or what, or maybe, you know, people are having dinner out of them or something. But uh, the place used to be crawling with them. It was just everywhere you looked. And the last few weeks, yeah, haven't seen much. Um, goats, yeah, forget it. It, they're gone absolutely gone if I want goats back here I'm gonna have to get them myself and bring them so maybe we give some goats to Peter as a birthday gift uh, in the near future uh, okay now here it is real quick and we're gonna dive and leap straight into this car because this is finally and truly going to be a quick take of this machine and it's going to be for a few reasons uh, not just because I'm always promising it and frankly never deliver uh, but you know it's it's been done we had the cars been done. We did a E63 wagon not that long ago. Uh, I did a 2014 E350 the other day, which, you know, for all intents and purposes, is sort of a similar car. Uh, so I'm not going to go crazy getting into this thing too much. This is going to be an actual quick take review uh, on this 2014 Mercedes-Benz CLS 63S. Uh, in the diamond white edition. Well, I don't know. It's not really the diamond white edition. But anyway, I digress. Uh, the CLS to me is a beautiful car, and I've always liked it. It's one of the first, if not the first, Mercedes product that was designed with function over form. You know, I promised myself I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't reverse that, you know, the whole seven out of three people are dyslexic thing. But I did. Uh, you know, I just can't count on myself when the chips are down. Uh, okay, sorry. It's the first Mercedes that was designed with form over function. Uh, this, some people call it the German Jaguar, and I quite like that because I think it makes a lot of sense. You know, Mercedes came out with this thing in 2006 in the United States. Uh, it debuted in 2004 in one of the international auto shows, so it's been around for a while. Uh, but in 06, it was released to the United States, and it was a pretty big deal. I remember seeing one on the street at the time. Uh, that was the first gen. This is the second gen, uh, and there's now a third, mind you. But uh, that first gen CLS... It, it took my breath away at a traffic light when one pulled up next to me. You know, I hadn't really been keeping up on car magazines, so I really didn't know it was coming. Uh, so the thing just absolutely blindsided me. And I thought, what the hell is that? I mean, this swooping low roof line, uh, this, you know, unbelievably styled Mercedes that doesn't look like anything else I've seen before from the company. And uh, it just felt like a pretty big deal. And of course, then I had to learn a little bit about it. And now I really do like the CLS. Uh, one thing that I think is quite strange is Mercedes markets it as a coupe. Uh, so even though it has four doors, uh, even on the window sticker, everything that's written up about it, it's technically a coupe, which frankly is stupid. I mean, it's got four doors. It's a sedan. You know, it's like that whole quinoa quinoa thing. If you don't want people to say quinoa, then don't spell it quinoa. Spell it quinoa. Uh, and ditto for this. I mean, if you want your car to be a coupe, then give it two doors. <sighs> But anyway, it is what it is. Uh, but this thing did spark a pretty 
significant design revolution in the car world. Uh, you know, it was an experiment for Mercedes. They put it on an E-Class platform. They used, again, uh, form over function because, frankly, the way it's designed, it doesn't make a lot of sense, at least for rear seat passengers and some other things. And they figured it was an experiment. And if it didn't work out, they could quietly do away with it and no big deal. That said, it did work out. It actually worked out very well and people warmed to it. Some people hotted to it really, really quick, myself included. And uh, as a result, other car companies took notice and started building uh, imitators. Audi had that, um, what is it, the S7, the A7. Uh, BMW came out with their Grand Coupes. Uh, Volkswagen even came out with their CC, which was sort of a copy of this thing. And it spawned a whole new version of four-door coupes that, uh, again, I think is stupid, but I do like the designs of the car, and they do seem kind of cutting edge and very cool, and uh, I have to appreciate that. So, uh, But anyway, what they did was they took an E-Class platform, which is, of course, their pedestrian platform, and they put all this swoopy, good-looking bodywork on it, uh, raised the price, situated it between the E and the S in terms of what it cost, and uh, marketed it as a stylish alternative to the S for some people who wanted something sportier and to the E, uh, you know, for people who wanted something sporty but didn't necessarily want to look like a taxi in Barcelona either. So, um, and it seemed to work out for Mercedes. So, uh, the first gen, which I believe was the... Um, uh, the 219, the W219, sorry, C219, uh, was replaced by this, the second gen, which was the C218, which also makes no sense at all to me, but Mercedes chassis, no, they rarely do. And anyway, now there's a third gen that came out. Um, I think the first gen, in many ways, was better looking. But, uh, you know, in fairness, I could also say that it was the groundbreaker. Uh, it was the one that sort of spawned the others, so it does have that going for it. So maybe the second gen suffers a little bit from having been done before. Uh, but either way, here it is. So first gen ran 06 through 2011. Uh, second gen, uh, this one, ran 2012. Um, I don't know the end date, probably 18, 19. I don't know when they replaced. It doesn't really matter. For our purposes, we're only sticking with the two gens. And, uh, you know, you have to look at this thing. I mean, look at the roof line. It's lower than an E-Class. It's got this incredible semicircle swooping line running from the A-pillar back to the uh, D-pillar. Uh, it's got this haunched bodywork with big flares at the back, or at least, you know, curvature that sort of implies swoopiness running into this body line, contrasting one on the bottom angling down, one on the top angling up, and then uh, coming to a nice curvature there in the front uh, around those really ridiculously fancy LED headlights that Mercedes has put in everything for years now. Uh, this one has the, um, well, this one is an AMG car. This is the 63. In fact, the 63S, uh, which uh, was an op uh, option package on top of the regular 63, and we'll get into that as we go. So. Uh, anyway, in the spirit of a quick take, we're going to, um, we're just going to leap into the features and design of this car. I swear to God, this one is not going to be 38 minutes. This is going to be less. Uh, there you see the uh, rear deck lid spoiler, quite nice. You see the CMS 63 badging uh, with the AMG and the S badging there. Uh, it does not say formatic on the back, although it is indeed a formatic. In fact, in uh, this year, 2014, uh, the formatic portion became standard uh, as. Um, well, I mean, you know, look, and, and take it or leave it, I'm not, I'm not thrilled that they made Formatic standard because I like AMG cars that are rear-wheel drive, and I know they do sort of, you know, factor more rear power than front, but you still got the front wheels clawing at this thing, uh, which really makes it more of an Audi to me uh, than the uh, insane high horsepower rear wheel drive Mercedes muscle car uh, that this thing's predecessors were in terms of the CLS and the E. But uh, anyway, I digress. Uh, you see those swoopy LED tail lamps, very nice. Uh, the trapezoidal uh, quad 
pipes at the bottom, you know, the AMG Sport exhaust. You have a little diffuser down there. Uh, you've got the uh, little sensors in the bumper that are part of the uh, Parktronic system. This thing has active parking assist, which I demonstrated on that features channel I started recently uh, in that E-Class. And uh, it also works with the Distronic Cruise and the, um, uh, the lane keeping assist and all the other host of other crappy safety features this thing has. But anyway, let's start inside the trunk. So underneath the star uh, is a little pinchy thing and if you do that uh, it's going to power itself up and there you see because this thing shares a platform with the E-Class it is a pretty good there's that, that pneumatic suspension puffs all the time like some angry dragon or something it's a little bit unsettling uh, but anyway nice big trunk and uh, underneath this guy if we pop up here and it gives you a nice little clip you can put over the weather strip there. Uh, you get to your uh, spare tire and tool kit and that sort of thing. And uh, everything very nice in the trunk. Interesting tool kit, mind you. There's the uh, front license plate frame that hasn't been used. So uh, everything great under there. We'll put that back down. Uh, you do have a... You couldn't even use this as an infant containment net. Your infant isn't really going to fit in between here. I, I actually have no concept of what you're going to use this net for. It just seems a bit silly. Uh, I do like that it has these little um, tie down so you could ratchet strap an infant in the middle using you know bungee cords or even ratchet straps uh, and that way they're going to be pretty secure in the trunk and you won't have to worry about them. Uh, like a Honda Accord this also has a rear seat fold down so you see I clipped that little guy. Open this up. <laughs> And there you go. So I can lower that rear seat just like any pedestrian sedan and uh, really increase my cargo capacity. So if I need to bring, I don't know what, I mean any number of, you know, bags of mulch or ski poles or any number of long cargo, you can lower this thing and get yourself more cargo room. So that's all very nice stuff. And anyway, there it is. There's the trunk. So if you want to close that, again, when you're wealthy at this level, when you're paying six plus figures for a car, you really don't want to exert the effort to lower a trunk. So it's much easier just to press a button and uh, there it goes. The trunk will lower itself. Uh, have a look under the hood. You can get under there. Mercedes have these really weird up under the dash hood releases that I don't quite like, but at least they're not like those dumb BMW ones. Okay, so gone is that 6.2 liter V8, the naturally aspirated AMG, the first 6.3 in the modern era. You know, it's badged as a 6.3 because that's historical, but it was 6.2. This is the kind of shit that drives me crazy. But anyway, in the interest of fuel mileage and, uh, you know, emissions and that sort of thing, they did away with that 6.2 liter and they made the 5.5 twin turbo. So it's got uh, turbocharged uh, direct injection. And normally that kind of thing would annoy me, but they did radically bump up the horsepower and torque figure. So you do have that. God, the birds are going nuts. I have to start bringing shotguns with me. Anyway, so you've got five five liters turbocharged. It's got um, like 590 pound feet of torque. It's an absolutely insane torque figure. Uh, this one being the S model, it has 577 horsepower. Uh, I can't remember who did it. It was either Car and Driver, Motor Trend. They did an actual dyno test, and it was putting down like 550 at the wheels, which is a pretty impressive figure. Uh, which means you know you've got a 20 percent drain for the drivetrain. The true horse power number of the engine is probably over 600 but uh, anyway all very impressive uh, being an AMG car it's, uh, it's supposedly signed by the person who put it together uh, you can see this one has a little badge Betty Gonzalez uh, assembled this in her stall and hopefully did a very nice job of it uh, that's made it to a seven speed uh, MCT multi-clutch wet clutch design transmission which you know has mixed reviews uh, they say the ones in the Audi and 
the uh, Porsche are probably better. Uh, but, uh, of course, Mercedes has always been a little stodgy. So uh, maybe it isn't as quick to shift. Maybe it isn't as uh, blippy sporty. Uh, but it probably does have way more durability than the stuff from Porsche and Audi. So I'll give it a little credit for that. Uh, but anyway, that's running through that transmission into Mercedes 4Matic all-wheel drive system. And, uh, frankly, it's all very impressive under the hood. Now, because this thing is optioned with the Distronic Cruise and uh, other driver assist stuff, uh, you can see that the front star, and by the way, that Mercedes star stands for domination on uh, air, sea, and land, just for anyone who's not aware of that. Uh, but that's what it does. Uh, it becomes this little plastic radar cover, uh, which there is a uh, rate. God, the bird is driving me ape shit. Oh, God, would it shut up. Anyway, there's a little radar behind there that works with the Destronic Cruise to take account of the cars that are in front of you and uh, will uh, maintain its distance. So uh, there it is, all very neat stuff. And when you get into the headlights, you can see all the little LED stuff and projector beams and other things that make these headlights inordinately expensive if you ever need to replace one. On the wheels, you see it has these big, uh, you know, multi-spoke. I didn't count them. Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine-spoke wheels, uh, special to the AMG. They look like 19s or 20s. Really didn't look. You see they've got red calipers. They've got vented and slotted rotors the size of manhole covers. And uh, otherwise, they will... Uh, really bring this thing down fast from a high speed. Uh, this one does not have the $12,000 ceramic brake option, which is, you know, thank God. Because frankly, if you're not Michael Schumacher, you know, before the accident, what the hell do you really need 12 grand worth of ceramic brakes for? Uh, if you're not going to be tracking this thing, all you're doing is adding insane amount of money to your brake job. So uh, this is more than adequate to do what 99.9% .9 of the people will want to do with it and uh, looks great. You also see the uh, V8 bisexual badges on the fenders, nice stuff. Uh, like the pickle fork mirrors, and they're not going crazy with the design. Uh, they're nice and there and present, but they're not trying to dominate anything. They're just good rear view mirrors on this car. Have a look in the back seat. And uh, here is where the CLS comes into question. So uh, one thing that's neat is you have this frameless glass that's part of the uh, function uh, behind form design of this car. I mean, it could have a much taller greenhouse, which you would get in the E-Class for rear seat passengers, not to mention three across instead of two. Uh, but that really isn't the purpose of the CLS. Uh, this is much more stylistic and much more for, uh, you know, the, the riverboat gambler who's wearing nugget jewelry and you know, he has to put on a front. This is the kind of car he's going to want to have, particularly with this white leather. And frankly, I wish I were a riverboat gambler, but I'm not. Uh, you see the piano black, nice and muted, goes very nicely with this optional uh, white uh, leather. I can't remember what they call that. There's, um, uh, well, we'll have the window sticker in a minute, so we'll see it. But anyway, uh, this Napa leather is an optional, beautiful white package, which I think is just fantastic. And the way it uh, contrasts with the black is lovely. Uh, you see I've got all these wooden roller things here in the center console. Uh, here's a nice big spot for your rear passenger to store some uh, weapons, some 9 millimeters, that sort of thing. You've got an ashtray. You've got... Um, uh, cup holder, you've got a 12 volt outlet, all lovely. You can lower this guy, and what do you got? You got more stuff here. Another nice little place for a mini handgun, and then more cup holders. You got three cups in the back for two passengers. You really have to like that. And uh, otherwise, uh, I would say your Canadians, unless they're super tall, are going to be fairly chipper back there uh, because it just looks so damn cool. Uh, with the Parktronic, you can see it there ensconched in this um, uh, Alcantara headliner, uh, and that uh, little thing will pop up with green. This is a pod that has LED lights in it. Oh, God, that hurts. And when you uh, look in your rearview mirror, that'll show you your distance to stuff around you. Uh, you can also see it as the rear sunscreen deployed. And uh, those uh, headrests can go back down a little bit to make your rear vision a little bit better. So there it is. All right, I tell you what. So I'm going to get my crap inside the car, and uh, then we're going to go for a spin.
So I just love the design of this thing with that sloping black glass, that uh, incredible swoopy roof line, the little lip spoiler, the shark fin antenna, the haunches at the back. Um, you know, again, very, very handsome and I think befitting of a sport coupe from Mercedes-Benz, even if it does have four doors. So anyway, let's have a look inside. Uh, we do have keyless go, so to lock that, I can just put my little thumb there, my little thumb, that's great, on that indentation in the handle. That unlock it, it beeps to confirm, uh, to open it hand on that and it will open right up. And uh, again, the frameless glass around that I just think is all very cool. Uh, definitely meant to be sporty. Uh, again, with the piano black stuff, very attractive. Uh, the fit and finish, the quality is definitely up from prior years. Uh, the switch gear all looks nice. The white leather inserts and armrest look really nice. It's just frankly a, a very attractive car to look at and feels good to sit in. Uh, even down to these little aluminum spun end caps, which just look nice on there. And uh, of course you've got twin memory seats, this one being between the E and the S. So it's more expensive than the E and as such has, uh, you know, frankly better options uh, in terms of the way it all comes together. Uh, it does have the Harman Kardon system. They did have an upgraded Bang & Olufsen system that was more money. So Harman Kardon kind of got the shaft on that one. Uh, but uh, there you go. So you got the Kmart system. Uh, in here you got a little map pocket with uh, you know, a nice place to put some switch blades or extra little clips for your um uh, for your 9 mil or whatever, so it's all very lovely. Uh, this one again with that white leather package, it's absolutely gorgeous. The perforated Napa leather, lovely. Uh, it also has the uh, multi-contour and massage seats. Those are the controls for that there. You see we have an AMG badge in the uh, seat and uh, ensconched in the headrest is a uh, embossed AMG logo, so all very lovely. Let's hop in and fire this thing up. And while I'm going through the interior stuff, I'm going to leave it running so it can get up to operating temperature so we can try that launch control thing, if I can remember how it works. All right, so seatbelt on, uh, foot on the brake, start, stop. <laughs> it gives you a nice little growl and uh, everything uh, lovely. Nice seating position as well. Uh, this S model has a flat top and flat bottom uh, steering wheel with Alcantara grippy grips on the side. You've got uh, 10 and two grippies and you've got of course your flippity paddles here uh, down on the left side up on the on the right. Uh, let's get some AC going. I just had the defrost on this morning so won't make that mistake again. So get some chilly air coming. Okay, so you've got a very traditionally laid out instrument cluster. They don't uh, change the design for the AMG models, but you've got a driver information center, digital in the center. Uh, you've got your fuel gauge and temp gauge to the left. You've got your tack to the right. Uh, you know, they are special to the AMG, the silvery backgrounds with the red uh, hieroglyphics and such. Uh, in the non-AMG cars, they won't look quite the same and they certainly won't have that V8 by turbo badge or the SAMG badge. Uh, over here, you've got your light control, nice stuff. Um, if I could see it here, you've got your Distronic Cruise. Uh, to say, th this is unusual for me because I'm used to Benz having a cruise control higher, but it's down here. Um, but uh, to, you know, to set it, you push this, you see Distronic Plus, it's trying to set it now uh, to uh, decel down. And then this twisty guy controls the distance between the car in front of you. So if you want to have more distance, you can uh, roll that up. And if you want to have less distance, you can roll it down. And of course, I would like to have less. Uh, it's also got a uh, power uh, tilt and uh, telescopic, nice stuff. So you can set that where you want it. And uh, that works in conjunction with the memory seats. Uh, over there in the mirror, you see the little yellow triangle for the blind spot assist. Lovely. People demand that now, and uh, there it is. Uh, also on the wheel, you've got multi-function stuff. So uh, if I use this little keypad here, I can scroll through the driver information center, get the, um, uh, you know, it's gonna the Bluetooth audio, the phone, the, this gives you all the stuff it's got, the pre-safe brakes that break for you because you're not qualified, attention assist that uh, will scan you to make sure that you're operating the car safely, and if you're 
not. It's going to make you get a cup of coffee, blind spot, lane keep, all that kind of crap. Uh, over to serve, this gives you any service messages you might need and uh, settings you can change. Uh, this drove me nuts this morning. I couldn't figure out how to dim the uh, uh, the instrument panel. It's usually a little switch or buttons uh, somewhere on the panel itself. Not anymore. Now it's uh, part of the instrument cluster uh, digital readout and that was difficult for me to figure out. I had to YouTube it. But uh, anyway, you can go through and change some of the different factory settings, convenience, easy entry, that sort of thing. It's all lovely stuff. Uh, go further and you get into this AMG <coughs> thing, which will make the stop start inactive. It'll give you your water temp, your oil temp, and uh, otherwise roll through some of the gauges. We'll get back to that in a minute. Uh, over on this side, you've got your phone. You can answer or hang up on people. You can turn up your volume on the phone or the stereo. You can mute it. And uh, if I get over to radio, let's say, you can use your voice command. So we can hiss, uh, press this guy. 94.5. There it is. And so despite not being German, it uh, it actually does understand me. Uh, now in 2014, some of the other Benzes went to that big sort of silly dash with all the iPods stuck on top of it, which some people like, but I don't. I think this one is much more elegant, uh, particularly with all the stitched leather stuff on the top, uh, the final incarnation of the command unit in the dash. Uh, this to me was preferable uh, to what they did, to, you know, the C-Class and uh, the the S's in 2014, uh, but you know, take that as you may. Other people may like the new stuff better, but I just don't think it flows as elegantly as this one does. Uh, using this control, which uh, of course is reminiscent of the early BMW I drives, uh, you could go up into your navigation and change your zooms, all of that sort of stuff. Uh, you can, uh, what do we got? We got audio here, so you can get all your different audio stuff, AM, FM, Instagram, uh, Twitch, Twitter, whatever it is, snowflakes need to be happy, and uh, Bluetooth audio, which is great. Sometimes 14 might be a little early for that. Uh, you've got your uh, phone connector, mine's connected now. Uh, you can play your uh, video system if you want when the car stopped, and uh, then you can get into the different settings in the car. <clears throat> this also gives See your rear view camera, very nice stuff, and uh, otherwise is, you know, whatever, nice little screen in the dash. Uh, again, with the piano black contrasting with the sort of uh, swoopy aluminum look, I think that's all very nice. Uh, you've got a uh, JWC, the hell is that? This is new to me, I haven't noticed that before. So Mercedes has gone into some sort of a uh, upgraded cock that's uh, from some sort of a maker. So it's not a Timex after all. Uh, here you've got direct access uh, buttons for the uh, command system, which by the way stands for cockpit management and data system. That's why it only has one M. Uh, but uh, anyway, these are direct access that you've got. Um, I don't think we have CN, we have no CDs in here. So whoever was in here wasn't a CD guy, but you could put them in there. You can put a memory card here. You can directly go to your nav or your Bluetooth or your system or everything else through there. Uh, in fact, you can still, like in the old Benzes, direct tune your radio. So if you press the star, you can now enter a frequency. And uh, there you go. So that's cool that they kept that. Uh, this row of uh, switches here, this gives you your hot seats, gives you your cool seats, which weirdly you can run all at the same time. Uh, this will run the rear sunscreen up and down. There you see it lowering. Uh, this is your hazard switch. We're going to get rid of eco. That's that stop start thing. Uh, if you're in the drive through at Dunkin' Donuts and the parking sensors are hearing a curve and they're just going off, you can press that to turn it off and stop annoying you. And of course your hot and cool seats for the passenger side. Uh, the climate control is directly out of any bends. I'm going to take it for granted. You already know how to use it. Uh, down here you've got all your dynamic seats. I'm going to go on to the pulse control and uh, that's going to be a massage seat that inflates little bags uh, on uh, on the back and gives you a massage on the way to work which just makes you sick how the other half lives it really does uh, it also has dynamic seats if I press that and uh, what that's going to do is if I take a right turn it inflates the left bolster of the seat if I take a left turn it inflates the right and uh, it means that as a wealthy person I don't have to stress too hard keeping myself ensconced. Uh, nice little roller here where you get
get a couple of uh, cheap cup holders and by cheap I mean good because they won't break. Uh, this is the uh, settings for the drive line of the car. Uh, this no C is no longer comfort. It stands for you know, I can't remember, but it's something really lame, like conservative ecological, some kind of crap. It's no longer comfort, but anyway, you do have sport. What is it? Does it give it to you? No, it won't tell you anymore. See, it just says C. Eh, whatever. You got sport plus. Uh, you've got manual. This means you're going to have to flip it your way through the gears. And uh, then you could do a race start, which you see RS down there, which we'll get into when we go. Uh, I'm, You know, it's a pretty shifter, this thing. I'm not going to argue that. It's pretty, but it's not intuitive. You've got a button for P for park. Uh, so from park, if you want to go in reverse, you have to go forward. I'm not used to that, and it screws me up every time. Uh, what ends up happening is I go backward, which puts me into drive. So that takes a little bit of getting used to, as does the fact that the shifter seems to have a hole in the middle of it. But um, anyway, it made up for it with that little AMG badge. Uh, what do we have here? An ashtray. Nice. You got that if you need it. Flip this guy up, and you've got your auxiliary and iPod input. You got a 12 volt USB and uh, a lovely place to store guns or narcotics. All right, in the glove box, we got a set of books, and here is a window sticker. And I'll tell you what was interesting to me. Uh, in a world where I'm always shocked by what cars cost today, I actually underestimated this or overestimated it. I thought this was going to be a $140,000 car. I was sure of it, uh, particularly with that S package. Uh, but no, actually, this thing stickered at 118. So, I mean, is it a bargain? <laughs> It seems bizarre uh, to call it a bargain in the uh, in the world of cars with a hundred and eighteen thousand dollars sticker, but again, it's less than I would have predicted, and I find that kind of interesting. Um, there you see the S model formatic coupe, like we talked about, as if it were a two door. Uh, does have some good options. About twelve grand worth of stuff. You've got the diamond white, and uh, it, this was a special order car. There you see SPC special order rear side airbags premium one. Uh, it's got the Designio, one of the dumbest names in the car world. It sounds like a clown to me. Some people say Designo, and that really, you know, Designo the clown, like an art school's mascot or something. Uh, but anyway, it gives you the uh, deep white leather package with deep white nether, le Napa leather, which is, you know, looks great and it's nice to sit in. And uh, you do get the driver assistance package uh, there with the Distronic Plus pre-safe active blind spot active lane keeping and uh, everything nice and proper so uh, and of course the parktronic so this car will park itself it will turn the steering wheel for you if you're a shit parallel parker you need not worry this car will handle it so uh, anyway let's go for a spin I think we're up to temperature uh, there you see that P that will actually um, uh, have a little, uh, you know, I, I'll link to that in the bottom and that I, de I demonstrated the way that worked in that E-Class and it's the same in this car. Uh, you can see we're in M here, so we're in manual as well. If I go to sport, it goes back to drive. Oh, and I almost forgot, you can turn off your trash control, at least, you know, in theory. I'm sure it kicks back on when it's unhappy. Uh, you can change your suspension dynamics. There's AMG Sport Plus suspension system. And if you hit the AMG button, uh, that's going to go to wherever you set it up for, uh, for your sportier sort of driving. All right, so we're going to let the uh, the gates open. Uh, so when I go outside, I'm going to try the launch control if it's not too sunny, if we can see anything. And uh, then we'll uh, continue on with a uh, very quick test drive. All right, the sun was a bit much, so I turned the car around. You see we're up against a hard stop up there, so this is not going to be a full-on acceleration run, but I can at least show you how the uh, launch control works in this car. And uh, God knows if you want to have fun on the street, that could be one way of doing it. Uh, so we've got everything set up. We've got M, we've got trash control and sport handling mode. Uh, now we've got uh, in full sport double secret handling mode. AMG button on. I'm going to twist this to RS. Okay, to confirm, race start, paddle up. 
All right, so now I'm gonna put the uh, brake on full with my left foot and I'm gonna floor it. And it's gonna keep the car at about 3,500. Now all I do is let go of the brake. For fuck's sake. All right, so obviously there's a time limit. Let's go back and try that again. Without the long-winded explanation. All right, so now we've got it. We've got uh, all right, to press gas pedal. And so that was a race start in automatic mode, uh, which was actually fine uh, because, frankly, flipping my way through the paddles this morning, um, you know, just doesn't jive well with the coronavirus whiskey, which is keeping me protected. So anyway, there it is. So if that's how you get the zero to 60 times uh, in the low threes, which are absolutely insane, honestly, for a big, heavy car like this, uh, the fact that it handles uh, and uh, accelerates faster than many supercars is just crazy. Uh, anyway, I'm going to pick it up again at the end of the street and we will uh, keep going. Alright, so this is another one of these cars on the list that I just simply can't own. Uh, because I just wouldn't have a driver's license left. I mean, it's a car that begs to be driven uh, at an insanely high rate of speed. It's a car that begs you to race the Mustang GT next to you at the traffic light because you're really going to embarrass him uh, with your big heavy sports coupe. And uh, it's just, again, I mean, you can dissect traffic like a surgeon in this thing. Uh, you just aim this sporty Alcantara wheel where you want it, hammer the throttle, and almost 600 horses uh, will take you to the hole that you have created in a hurry in an absolute hurry. Look at everyone fighting for that open spot at the traffic light. It's hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. People are such aggressive drivers now. They all drive like they're in this car. Put me in my pickup truck and I'm like an old lady. All right, well, I'm not going to make you wait through the traffic light. We'll pick it up again in a second. What? What do we got? I didn't like my lane change. One thing that uh, interests me is it's not as loud in here as I would have thought. And when you go into Sport or Sport Plus mode, the exhaust doesn't really open up. I mean, it's, you know, don't get me wrong. You can hear it and it sounds pretty great. Uh, but uh, it's just a little bit less... Um, a little bit less noisy than I would have expected, so uh, I don't know if that's just a Benz thing. They're more conservative than uh, some of the other companies or uh, just something they overlooked. <laughs> Who the hell knows? doesn't really matter. Uh, it's going to be noisy enough for most. Uh, but there it is. So if I owned this thing, there is no question uh, that I would be without a driver's license in an absolute hurry. I mean, I drive like an asshole in this car. Uh, I'm, I'm going to admit it. I mean, I just, one of those guys, when you're, you know, not in the mood to be slicing up traffic, you look at uh, the tisk tisk, you know, oh my god, another uh, traffic hoodlum. And uh, I can't help it. It's just one of those cars that calls for it, much in the way that any American muscle car does. I mean, put me in a Shelby GT500, and uh, I'm the same way. And I think that uh, this car is more like them than they are like it. I mean, this is a real German Q-ship uh, muscle car, if you will. I mean, uh, you know, what was so difficult 30 years ago in the 80s, horsepower and torque and that sort of thing, seems to come so easy in the last decade or so. I mean, 577 horsepower, and it seems it's like without even really trying. Good God. Yeah, I mean, the thing is just a rocket ship. So look, there it is, 2014 Mercedes-Benz CLS 63S quick take. I guarantee this is under 30 minutes. Has to be. Has to be. I'll do a little run down the highway and that's it. And uh, again, I know the plethora of cars I've promised you have not yet shown up. Silverados, Cordobas, Mark 5s, but they are coming. They are coming. So thank you very much for having a look. Appreciate it. And uh, we will see you with the next one. Take care. You know, one thing that's interesting is that while the 
the Sienna 63 is limited to 155. Uh, this Sienna 63S is not. Uh, this is going to run all the way up. What am I in? Comfort? Oh my goodness. Let's get into Sport Plus again. Uh, this will run up to 186, which is uh, not insignificant. Let's see if I can do this without being a complete idiot. Uh, because again, this car just makes me drive like a complete idiot. It's probably good that this pickup truck's in front of me. Frankly, you really should let me pass. That whole slower traffic keep right thing. It's not really a thing down here in Florida. People just kind of go where they want to go. Oh, this is ridiculous. it back down because again you know it's just a car that is going to keep me without a license and I'm going to go back into my diesel Silverado that uh, feels very nice at 80 to 85 miles an hour thank you for having a look today really appreciate it and uh, we will see you with the next one take care